This mahi-mahi with almond parmesan crumbles is a great way to incorporate more fish into your diet. The meat of mahi-mahi is very firm, almost chicken-like, so it's not only a great fish for all the fish lovers, but also the people who are not big fans of fish. It's very subtle in taste and smell, it doesn't have that fishy smell, so it's a great fish to introduce yourself or your loved one's children, for example, into the world of seafood. So let me show you how to make it. Preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, then get your mahi-mahi filets out of the fridge and place them on a plate. Use a paper towel to dry them super well. The more water is on them, the less crunchy the almond parmesan crumbles later. Now set the fish aside and get to the chopping board. First peel, and then super finely chop one or two shallots, depending on the size. You want to end up with about a quarter cup of finely chopped shallots. Any other onion will work as well, of course. Then get two cloves of garlic and chop those super finely as well. Last thing to chop is a small handful of parsley leaves. Same as with the shallot and garlic, chop super finely and keep separate from the shallot and garlic on the board. Now preheat a pan over medium heat and once hot, add one and a half tablespoons of butter to it and then add the chopped shallot and garlic into the melted butter and stir fry it until they start to brown. Then add them to a bowl, everything to the last drop of butter in the pan and let them cool for a minute. In the meantime, use another half tablespoon of butter to coat the inside of a baking dish large enough to fit your mahi-mahi filets. Add the filets to the baking dish and season generously with sea salt and pepper. Now get back to your bowl and add the chopped parsley, a quarter cup grated parmesan cheese, and a quarter cup almond flour. And now use a fork to mix it all together and form crumbles. Once you get your nice crumbles, add them to the top of your mahi-mahi filets. Now place the fish into the hot oven for 13 to 14 minutes, depending on the thickness. And then after that, turn on the broiler for maybe a minute so the crumbles get nice and crunchy and a little brown. And by then your fish is ready. You want to shoot for about 130 degrees internal temperature. So if you have a meat thermometer, it's great to use it in this case. Overcooked fish is incredibly dry. So do not overcook your fish. If you want to take advantage of the heat in your oven, you can make some roasted asparagus at the same time. For that, all you have to do is put some washed, dried, snapped asparagus onto a baking sheet, drizzle a little oil over them, season with salt, and then use your hands to coat every spare very, very well. And then just place them in the oven next to the fish. They take 12 to 14 minutes to roast, so the same time as the fish. Now, I like serving my fish with rice. You all know I'm the queen of instant pot rice. So if you wanna make rice as well, this is how you do it, I have a full tutorial. And then once your fish is finished baking, take it out of the oven and then serve it with that roasted asparagus and some rice. Take some of that fish sauce that accumulated in the baking dish and you can also drizzle some fresh lemon juice on top of it and then in. Joy. It's so good. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you're gonna make this recipe. If you do, please don't forget to snap a picture and show me. I love seeing you when you make any of my recipes and I'll see you with my next video. Bye.